the most dangerous tasks in guitar building is cutting out a peg head shape using a router. In this Luthier's Tips Du Jour video, I'm going to show a way of doing this using a drill press. I would like to say that I came up with this method on my own, but I didn't. I learned it from Brazilian guitar maker Antonio Tessarin years ago when I was studying classical guitar building with him. Just like when using a router, you must have a pattern or a template for the bit to follow as you cut out your shape. However, instead of using a router bit, I'm going to be using a drill bit blank or a drill bit stock. I like using the 4 millimeter diameter size. I grind an edge on it that is about twice the diameter or about 8 millimeters along the face of it. I use a grinding wheel to put the edge on it. I suppose you could also use a file too if you have some extra time and energy on your hands. I showed this drill press router method years ago in my classical guitar building DVD and since then have been getting a lot of emails asking where people can get this drill bit blank. Industrial supply warehouses carry this tool, but if you have a box of drill bits sitting around the house, you already have this tool in several different sizes. Just grind an edge on the part that usually gets chucked up in the drill press. Other than the safety aspect, another advantage of using this method is that you can cut tighter shapes and radiuses with it than you could with a regular router bit. Firmly attach your template to the back side of the neck. Here I just use double sided tape to do this, but you could also screw it down. Place the drill bit blank that you've ground the edge on into the chuck of the drill press and then raise the table of the drill press so that you'll be cutting about eighth of an inch deep for your initial pass. I run the tool at about 2,000 RPMs. If you run the tool at fewer RPMs, it won't cut very well. If you run it at higher RPMs, it can get too hot. Use your template as a guide, just like you would using a router bit with a bearing on it. Keep the workpiece moving so that the drill bit does not become stationary and get hot. If it does, it could damage the tool or your template. Since you're cutting a trough, there's no place for the chips to be ejected. These chips must be removed or the tool will not cut correctly. It will hang up as you try and move it along the template. The drill bit blank can also get very hot if you don't remove these chips. One way to remove the waste is to turn the neck upside down and lightly tap it on the table. This works well in the beginning when the trough is not very deep. As you progress though, the trough gets deeper and deeper and you might need something like compressed air to help blow out the excess waste. The important thing is to make sure that the chips do get removed. If not, it can alter the shape of your pattern. Something else that is very important to remember is that the shaft of the tool is functioning as the bearing on the router bit and it is riding against the side of your template. So the template must be firmly attached to the neck. We don't want it to move. After making a few passes around the template, the tool has cut deep enough that it is now not only riding on the template, but on the new surface that you have just cut into the headstock. I usually make a complete pass all the way around my template before stopping to remove the chips. However, in this video I'm stopping after each section of the peg head to impress upon you the importance of removing these chips. You will also notice that I've placed a scrap piece of plywood on my drill press table. You will need this when you make your final pass with the drill bit blank so that it doesn't cut into the drill press table. The key to making this technique work is to make sure that the tip of the drill bit blank has a relatively sharp edge on it. Also you want to take small cuts. Don't try and cut too deep and go slow. Notice how I keep a firm hand on my template as well. I do this until I've cut deep enough that the drill bit shaft is actually running on the new surface that I've cut. If the template moves before you cut deep enough, you can ruin your whole day. I've never had an issue with using double sided tape attaching the template to the neck, but make sure that it's firmly attached. 
After you've made one complete pass around your peghead template, eject the chips and then raise the table and make another pass. Usually I turn the crank on my drill press table about one third of a turn. This will raise the table about an eighth of an inch or maybe a skosh more. Watch now as I make another pass around the template. After each pass, eject the chips and then raise the drill press table by turning the crank about a third of a turn. It will probably take you about a half a dozen passes or maybe even more to get all the way through the peghead. After the perimeter of the peghead has been cut out, you can then go ahead and drill your tuner holes. Make sure that you drill these tuner holes before cutting out the slots in the peghead. Once that is done, then you can go ahead and use the same drill press method to cut out the slots. Although this method of using the drill press as a router takes longer than using a regular router and bit to cut out your shape, you sure won't find a safer way of doing this. Notice how I'm able to place my hand right up next to the tool as it's spinning. This is something you wouldn't even consider doing if you were using a regular router. 